Now, we have a quick demonstrations of the different classes that we have discussed in our last module related to the Java networking and as we have learned about the different classes are there. So, in this demonstration we will try to emphasize about the different classes and their utilizations and then how the internet, how the URL related information that can be accessed given the URL and like this one. And then mainly we will discuss about the client server that means, how the two sockets can be designed and then the two sockets can communicate to each others and there may be one server sockets and the client sockets like and there are also the two way communications also and then the concurrent uh, communication that means, one client one server can serve the request to many clients which are connected to that server. So, those things we will try to give a I mean demonstration uh, in this uh, session. So, the let us have the first program and this program is related to the URL class utilizations as we have said that every URL can be create, created as an object. So, this is called the URL objects. So, for example, https then colon then double slash nptl dot ac dot in slash some file name is basically is the URL and then regarding this URL we can make a connection. So, the connection is that whatever the location we have specified to that the distance machine or local host whatever be the. So, it will make an connection, but here URL basically in other than connection we can have the many methods are there by which you can access the information about the URL. For example, which protocol that it has been used or what is the name of the server, what is the IP address of the server, what is the port number, what is the file that we are going to access whatever it is there. So, all these informations can be accessed here as you see in this program we create an URL object. So, this is basically URL object here and then uh, we just okay, this is the constructor of the URL class argument is the URL uh, specification, this is the URL actually for which you want to have the information and then this URL is an object and for this object we can call the different method like say get protocol, then get host, get port num, port, then get file everything. So, here basically file is this one and whatever it is there. Now, if you run this then definitely it will try to find a communication connection from this machine this program actually. So, this program to this one server and if there is no I mean violation in the protocol then definitely the connection will be successful. However, HTTPS is a secure uh, protocol. So, from every program it may not allow the transmission. Now, let us see exactly if we try to run this program whether our HTTPS protocol service can allow you to access uh, to this connection and then finally, fetching the file it is here. So, I just ok run this program here. So, this program has been successfully compiled. So, no, no problem so far the compilation is concerned there. Anyway, we are not getting the connection here. So, only we are getting the information about this URL as you see the output as you see the output here and we see that okay, protocol that is there HTTPS, the host uh, name is basically nptl.ac.in and the port number in this case is minus 1 and then file that basically which this URL specify course.hph everything is a expect, ex accepted from this method only. Okay, so, this is the first example that and in major program actually we will uh, can have this URL class if it is then lot of information about these things can be accessed and then those information can be used for our communication purpose. Our second example is basically the URL connection that means, it basically used to make a connection from the specified URL location to the current program and this program if you see here again we create the URL object here and then this is the URL and then URL connection is basically this create an object which basically a connection object here in this case and open URL open dot connection is basically for opening a correction and then once the connection is open. So, this basically stream it basically uh, is a basically TCP uh, protocol you can stream uh, sockets like the continuous stream can be stored here and this is the stream buffer we can use it here. So, that all the stream that can be connected by means of reading the distance machine the things will be there and here is basically displaying the content that we have there. Now, here we have to establish the connection. Now, we just running the program 
and let us see after the execution whether we can get the file from the distance machine yes or not. Now, here is the problem is because we are not able to establish the connection as this is the HTTPS actually other than HTTPS or some other protocol if it can follow then it may be possible to fetch the file here in the local machine, but here because the protocol is a restriction so that all connection this we have sent the request however, the protocol uh, that implementer in the server end where is the NPT dot is that, that refuse our connection. So, we could not get this one. So, here you can see connection timed out that means, they it has tried to several times and send the request, but the proto that server has refused the connection that is why it is there. So, because of this protocol only we could not could, uh, get it there some other look some other machines other fine if it is connected to the net if we do it then maybe the communication is successful. Okay, so, this is the example regarding the URL class and then URL connection class. Now, here is the another example HTTP URL connection is basically the connection which basically follows the HTTP protocol and this example is basically the similar to the previous one and as we see that this is the URL object we have created specifying the URL location and then this is basically the opening the connection following the HTTP URL connection. So, here is the object that we have followed to do that that means, connection objects and then then for the entire connection if it is successful we read the entire document by just uh, here actually we are not reading the entire document rather for this HTTP connection actually HTTP has a lot of information there are called the header information. So, header field uh, usually there are 8 fields are there. So, in this program we try attempted to read all the header fields that is there in this connection objects. So, this program will do these things and if we run it then HTTP URL connection then we will be able to find the header information those are there in this connection right. Okay, here also because of the HTTPS we are not able to get any information regarding this what is the header fields and others. So, that is why the connection is not successful and then connection is timed out. Now, next example that we are going to discuss about communication using user datagram protocol which is the connection less on service uh, basically and okay, before going to this uh, inet address class. So, this example is related to the inet address class and okay, so inet address is basically the similar to the concept it is there inet address IP inet address guest uh, get by name and this is basically the name of the IP locations or other is a server where it is located this by this is again a URL sort of thing only by the domain name uh, that we have followed here. So, actually inet is basically corresponding to this server as we have already mentioned there is a particular IP address logical address. So, basically with this IP is an object by which we will be able to access the different information regarding the inet addressing scheme. So, here say get host address what is the name of the host, what is the port number, what is the name uh, IP address everything we can be obtained here. For example, in this case uh, we have to we are printing the IP address IP. So, IP address like 8 bit uh, uh, 4 8 uh, 4 8 bit uh, con content in the IP 4 concept it will be displayed here. Now, let us run this program. So, that we will be able to see exactly what is the IP address of www.nptl.ac.in from this and then the guest host address also. Yeah, as you see here the host name is NPT www.nptl.ac.in and then IP address for this particular machine is 14.139.160.71. So, this is an example about IT net, INET address related. So, we have discussed about the URL, URL connection, HTTP URL connection and then INET address those are the concept basically regarding the actual specification of the distance server whatever even the server or any other machines that we are going to connect or establish a connection. Now, after having this information now it is our task to see exactly the as we have mentioned there are two protocols connection oriented and connection less and they are basically implemented using UDP and then TCP IP UDP for connection less and then TCP is for connection oriented. These are example that we are going to discuss uh, going to give you is that connection 
less protocol following the UDP and here the basic idea is that uh, we will prepare the two programs two sockets rather using the datagram sockets and then datagram packets there and then the two sockets will run concurrently in this at the same time in this case in the two sockets are in the same machine, but from the two different windows this means that assuming that this is basically they are running in a, in a separate uh, machines actually. So, in the first example as we see it is basically the server uh, sockets. So, it this is basically wait to receive any request from one client and if it receives one request then it will basically response. Here in this case as we see uh, we create one object called the DS is a datagram uh, socket objects and then you have to give the port number. Here we are giving that port number you can give any number here because it is implicit to give any port number. So, we have given one port number whatever it is there 4 digit 5 digit whatever and by the by okay with our own we have given 3000 if absolutely no problem, but if this port number should be used for other communicating pro programs other sockets also. Anyway, so this is the basically buffer where we want to store we made that 1024 size of the buffer and we create a datagram packets here as you know UDP follow datagram packet concepts that mean it will convert or enter the message into number of packets of fixed size say 64 bytes like like and then this basically packet will create these things here is the 1024 is the total content the message and then is basically converting the packets actually and then here the this datagram packet is basically assigned the as a buffer like if we receive any message from the distance machine or from other sockets it will store into this packet. So, we receive the packet and then all the packet will be stored here in the DP and so this is basically the receive is the method which is defined there in datagram packet uh, concept itself. So, it will basically receive uh, all the packets uh, from the sockets and then that packet will be display here this is the method by which the entire packet content can be displayed on the screen uh, we can save this packet into our local machine also using file output stream program. And then finally, once the receive is over then we should close it and in this case client server is waiting once it receive a packet it will receive it and then finally, then uh, subsequently it will close it. And so, this is the client side program a uh, server side program the client side program means sender whenever sender sends something how sender can sense it. Now, the sender can sense it again datagram sockets for the sender sides needs to be created. So, this is the DS object for the sender like and this is the string that message that the sender wants to send it small message indeed here and then the inet address is created IP because it is inet address is required and which machine as is the default one. So, in the same machine uh, all the IP inet address will be by default it is 127.0.01 and then datagram packet is basically for the message it basically convert in the datagram packet. So, this is the object it is there and so this basically datagram packet is created taking this string as a total information about the string it is here and the datagram packet is created with the address to whom this datagram packet should be sent here is the address of the server we have already mentioned earlier and then datagram packet is ready to be sent and then here is the send method will send this datagram packet to the server basically to this port, ad, port address actually and then finally, once send is over it will basically close the uh, connection. So, this is the concept that sender and receiver here receiver being a server will receive a message from the sender, sender is the client here in this case. Now, here just I am going to give a demo of this program execution you will be able to understand how it will work here. Here the first you have to start the receiver program then you have to start the sender program means receiver should be there first otherwise if you start sender program first then sender will say sending this, but there is nobody to receive it. So, their message will lost. So, here as we see a receiver, so receiver receive this message welcome to NPTEL this is basically the windows which is running the receiver socket and this is the window which is running the server socket. So, in the server socket we just run this server or sender actually and then sender sends this document message as you know welcome to uh, NPTEL like and it goes to the receiver, receiver received it and then print it. So, this is the idea about using EDP protocol, uh, EDP protocol here datagram packet. 
Now, our next example here, uh, this is the second uh, version of this protocol. Uh, here, basically, uh, implementation of client server mechanism, but here uh, the idea about uh, is that. Uh, so, is a dialogue message it is this one. Yeah, so, it is a dialogue message that means the same UDP uh, protocol that we have discussed earlier the difference here is that uh, the communication will just in a chatting manner that means, uh, first server socket program will always be there to listen to the client and then client will send some message server will receive this message and then server again send some message to the client client will receive it and this dialogue may continue whatever the things until server or any client send a stop message for that. So, this is the program concept it is here and you see this is the implementation of this one all these import section is mandatory java dot net and other things uh, in, uh, input output for streaming and everything it is there all those things is obvious. And this program as you see D S is basically the socket I am now discussing about server side program. So, D S is the socket for the server and here is basically uh, port number is 1, 2, 3 uh, port number is this one right and then this is what is called the um, 1, 2, 3 is the port number right here. Yeah, this is the port number and this is the size of the maximum buffer that it can handle actually. So, is a byte this is a basically temporary buffer we can say is an array of uh, stream basically. And then datagram packet DP receive this is basically we create an datagram packet because we have to use the UDP. So, datagram packet we have declared a datagram packet name the DP receive and then DP receive object is created that means receive if it receives some uh, message from uh, receive is basically the content that needs to be received from a distance machine and the length of the packets actually and then DS dot receive is basically we have to receive if it receives any packet there. So, this is basically the method which is basically in a constant watching and then whenever it receive a packet it will basically get this one. Once this packet is received and then you can send the prompt message that client and what are the message that is received is basically printed there. If data received to okay, so if there is a end message they buy that means it will say that okay, this is the trans, I mean communication is uh, I mean over and then it will close the message. So, this is the server side program similarly there is a uh, ok. So, let us go to the yeah uh, fine. So, uh, this is the client side program similar to this in this case as you see here uh, one another socket client socket is created and this client socket is basically read the continuous streaming from the keyboard like we whatever it is type it from the keyboard it will read it a, a scanner class is created here the scanner class is basically reading some input from the keyboard standard input and here is the socket that we have created datagram sockets and then this is the IP address of this thing and this is the temporary buffer where the before sending this message will needs to be stored here and this is the basically portion of the uh, uh, okay, communication. So, this is the communication here and is basically uh, so, is reading one step, you know, input from the keyboard. So, this is the scanner only and then it is stored in the buffer and then it basically convert in the packet. So, this is the DP send is the packet where the buffer uh, the packet will be created uh, buffer will contain all the message that uh, the client wants to send it to server and then finally, uh, DS send the socket will send the packet to the server and then it will basically continue until this message by is there. So, if it types by then both server will understand that client is no more interested to send any message and then the server also will close its connection as well as this client also will close its connection. So, it is basically the idea about this is a server and client side program this is the client side program. Now, here we are just see again two windows we have to first start the server window first. So, the server is ready to listen any request from the client and then we will start the client uh, server client program and another window will be there. So, two windows actually we can write the one window here one window here.
right. Now, so this is basically the client side program. So, this window is basically a client window and this is the server window. Now, here client should send some message. So, hi, I just uh, typing the message hi NPTEL Java program <coughs> client from from client. Now, I am sending this one. Yeah, now okay, the time message that whatever it is there, we are typing high NPTL. <coughs> yeah, I am from client. Okay, now you see we have typed it high NPTL, I am from client, then okay, server should send some right, okay, then it can send some more message like NPTL test, uh, write something testing server. Okay, so it is there. Okay, fine. Yeah, so whatever the message that we are typing, we are sending it. Now, if we type by, by, then okay. So here in the client, send by and exiting. Okay, this is the one right way by which uh, the server, a client can send some message in a continuous streaming ma manner. It is not the dialogue, right? Okay, so, it is not the dialogue of course, okay, the dialogue program will come there. So, the both way the communication can be uh, shown there using some TCP protocol we have planned it. Anyway, so this is basically the message that so the machine can be done here. Now, let us come to the second example. Okay. Our next example is basically to explain the TCP uh, IP protocol using again server sockets and then socket that we have discussed. So, server socket is for the server side programming and the socket class is for the client side programming. Now, as we see here this one. Okay. So, here as we create a SS is basically the server side sockets and this is basically we have given on port number to this socket program as 6666. So, it is given by us and this port number should be used by the client if this client wants to communicate to this server again. And this basically is the socket object is created that means, a socket basically S1 socket object is created only if the server socket accepts the connection that if it is reaches to him. So, here basically ss dot accept is basically the request that can be attended by the server and accepted. So, one socket object is created regarding to that one. So, this is basically server socket is now ready and then socket also from the client is also accepted by the server, it is also ready. Once everything is ready, okay, so once everything is ready then we have to read the message that will be sent by uh, that will be sent by client. So, it is basically we have to create a data input stream D i s and you see s means if we receive something from the s, s dot get input stream. So, get input stream method is basically one method it is there in the socket class itself and this method will read all the content that is there from the socket program sites actually. And then this will basically read as a string as we have given this one. So, it will store as a string whatever the input stream that we can read converting the string actually. And then finally, this stream will be printed on the screen and then the server socket will be will closed. So, server socket if we run this program it will wait to receive one request and it will accept the request and then it read the content from that socket and then finally, print it. So, this is about the server program in this case and as we have seen that we have used the server socket and the socket. So, it basically uh, follows the connection oriented protocol namely TCP protocol and here is the client side program 
So, for the client side program is concerned here as we see we create a server a socket for the client. So, this is and the port number is the same as the previous one and then this is the output stream that we have created because we have to send something. So, get output stream method is basically we will create a stream with the string that is there. So, here d out write utp hello server this is the string actually the message will be converted into the output form and then output stream will be maintained. So, that the stream will propagate I uh, will uh, send to the server and finally, it will close. So, server is closed that is all this is the message here is basically very similar to the UDP protocol where server sends a message to the client and then client printed it whether it is a continuous manner or is it just only one chat whatever it is there. So, in this case also it is like one chat is there server and client both are ready into windows and then client sends some message uh, the message is here hello server and the message is received by the server and then printed it that is all. Now, the next example is basically dialogue this is more interesting program one and here the dialogue between the two sockets one is server socket another is the client socket and then client will send some message server will receive server will print it then it will send to the client client will print it then it will send another message the communication may continue until both the party may want for this. So, there will be some stopping criteria say stop from stop message from both sides then both party will understand that okay, chat is over. So, here is the example very similar to the previous one only absolutely there is no difference as we see here this is a server socket the port number of the server program and this is basically accept uh, to the sockets right. So, that means, if it accepts then a socket object will be established a connection from the server to that is sockets one and then this is basically input that means, reading stream from the distance machine I mean from the other sockets and then outputting that means, if the server wants to send something then it basically outputting and here is basically flow that it will display the content and this content will continue until uh, there is a stopping criteria reach there is a stop that means, if it receive a message stop then this will basically close and then this is the server side one. Similarly, there is a client side program as you see here the client side program this is the socket that we have created the post, no, port number this one and this is basically in the same machine. So, we have to tell that this is a local host if we explicitly specify the IP address or some host name then obviously, it will go to the distance that is the only difference. So, in this case the local host means in the same machine, but in from the two windows that is why we have used it and then rest of the things is very similar to there we have to define the data input stream that means, reading from the server side any message and then output is basically sending some message to the server using TCP protocol. And here is the basically if the client received any message then how they will print it how they process it. So, this is a continuous manner means both the party will continue their dialogue till there is a stop from both sides or from any one sides like. So, this is the example now we can give an example so that we can see we will type some message from the client it will go to the server server will receive it server will send some message it will come to the client, client will again receive it and then client, client will type something like this this. So, now here from the uh, server side ok. So, server and client both are now ready now here from the. <coughs> so, we are just sending from the client side uh, hello server hi server and so here you see client says hi server now either from the client or server we can write something now in the client hi how are you how are you I am sending this message now it go to I am fine ok. So, it is come to this I am fine and then if we come here in the client or server then buy or stop stop. So, now we will see uh, this will go there. So, client server says stop and then yeah. So, anyway, so this stop basically message received from either server or client or from both basically close the communication so it is there. So, this is the idea about the dialogue message now. Uh, so, and then remote communication is basically the same thing only the thing is that instead of local host we have to mention the IP address explicitly. Now, I will quickly come to the concurrent uh, what is called the server let us go to the concurrent server 
and here is basically uh, here uh, as the distance machine is not possible here to give a demo we will give basically in the same machine I am giving a in, uh, okay, detailed program you can have it from my uh, sites you can get the program and you can run it I do not want to discuss about the detailed program I will only give the demo of this execution. So, here the idea is that uh, one server program is there I can say the concurrent server it is basically thread implementation of the server which is bit difficult which I have discussed in our theory class. And then here we can plan for the two clients that more than two clients also can be possible two clients for this uh, the two windows actually we have to do it. So, there are two windows that we have mentioned here. So, there are total altogether three windows one windows for the server and another windows for uh, another two windows is for the client here. Now, as you see here ok. So, as you see here so this is basically the server window and this is the client one window and this is the client two window. Now, so all programs are running so server is concurrent here in that because if the message comes from any one client it will respond to that one. So, now I am typing something from the date about yeah so client is now communicating in ok. So, here basically uh, so client basically give the date so date has been printed then it basically asks that what do you want then whatever it is there right time I can say right time. Now, here basically the idea is that client 2 basically asking the time now all this response is coming from the server itself right. So, server is replying that it asks the date this ask the time and they are receiving this one and this is the message actually it is that ok. So, here what I can say is that client is basically responding to any request from any clients and then there is basically the input uh, is input to the server is basically the request from the client regarding any information and then it receives and then print it that is all. So, this way we can see that this is a concurrent program is there and details of the program that you can have it uh, from the program exact details from the slide discussion as well from my sites itself you can download it and then you can run and you can try to understand how it works and you should ex, uh, practice it then you can understand much more about it ok thank you very much.